Well, my mum and dad bought me a copy of Avengers number eight when I was four years old, and I, I looked through it, and uh, after I finished reading it, I just thought to myself, that's what I'm going to do when I grow up, I'm going to be a comic artist, and uh, I just put my blinkers on and thought of nothing else, much to my mum and dad's despair and anguish throughout the many years where I wasn't a comic artist. Uh, and then I, I went to art college for a couple of months, didn't like it, dropped out, thought that uh, I'd better be, be serious about bringing in the comics. So I started sending samples to the various comic companies. Um, back in the day when I was trying to break in, which was the early, just late, late 80s, early 90s, um, no internet. So it was much easier to break in the industry and much harder at the same time. It was sort of all that taught me. If you came from, came from America or Britain, you could work in American comics. If you came from anywhere else, it was much, much trickier. Um, so I just sent samples off to all the companies. One week I would draw four pages of Spider-Man and send it to Marvel. The following week I'd draw four pages of Batman and send it to DC. The following week I'd draw Judge Dredd and send it to Fleetway. And then I would choose one of the many independent comic companies that were about at the time, draw four pages of one of their comics and send it to them. And I did that for two years solid. Every week, four pages every week. Because I figured that if I was going to break into comics and be a professional comic artist, I would need to be able to produce a comic's worth of artwork every month. So I drew about 20 pages every month, pretty much. Um, you know, uh, and eventually, uh, and on the side, I opened a comic shop in Belfast, which is where I'm from. Uh, I opened a little comic shop in the back of the record store with my mate Fred, and God managed just to come in and buy his comics off me. So I just started to get work from 2008 and Marvel. I'd done a couple of uh, Action Force stories, and I had uh, some future shots for 2000, and God came in one day and said, uh, I've got this idea for a political story set in Belfast about the troubles. Um, and, uh, you need you be, shall we submit it together? You know, and, uh, because at the time Fleetway were doing a comic called Crisis, you can it, and a, a comic called Crisis, and, uh, which was all about political third world debt, all this sort of jazz. And it wasn't doing very well because it was a bit heavy handed. So we submitted that, they liked what they saw, flew us over to London, uh, said to me, Can you paint? Because it was all fully painted artwork, thanks to the message, basically in favour. Who can paint? Uh, uh, there was all this fully painted stuff floating about. Uh, so they said, Can you paint 96 pages? I had never painted in my life because all I wanted to draw was black and white American comics with superheroes in them. I lied and said, Yes, of course I can. And then went home and cracked myself. Quite frankly, and just like, Oh my God, now I've got to do this. And I sort of struggled through it. And it's 96 pages of me learning how to paint really well. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting and depressing. Garth and I done, Garth was working on Hellblazer, and I had drawn a thing called Streets for Archie Goodwin in BC, which was a terrible prestige format thing. It was awful, and, um, and I hated it. Uh, but uh, it, was too, it was too funny. I, I thought when I got into DC comics, I would, have, I would stop painting. I wouldn't have to paint any more comics. And the first thing he gave me was a fully painted prestige format thing. So I was just really very depressed about that indeed. Um, so after I did that, I was desperate not to do any more painting. Um, in fact, I got my brother-in-law to paint a lot of it for me. But towards the end, I was just like, oh, that's not this anymore. Somebody finishes for me and gave the, I think about the last 20 pages to him or something. Christ, it's awful. Anyway, um, and so Garth, Garth, Garth and I were both looking to work on something together. And uh, the demon wasn't selling well. And, you know, with Garth's background of what he likes to write, and I suppose to a degree my background of what I like to draw, which is generally tends to be violent and gory and, um, and funny and stupid and, and uh, all that, all those sort of words, I guess. I can't think of any more big words to, the, to describe that, but. Uh, so funny and stupid and violent and gory. Uh, and we kind of figured, well, the demon might be funny and stupid and violent and gory. Uh, up until that point, he'd been written, drawn by a guy called Val Semeckis, uh, and of course, based on the character by Jack Kirby, who I 
And I didn't really like the way they drew him. They looked a bit like a big teddy bear instead of a big demon from hell. So I just said, well, we'll do this and I'll draw him all sort of deep, demonic and we'll have a laugh. Um, and uh, yeah, we did. It's good fun. And uh, Garth introduced Hitman into it uh, fairly early on. Especially about beat Massey fairly rapidly into it. We're always trying to stop us doing, you know, every time we put Master Bator behind the bar and Noons, he would go, don't put him behind the bar and Noons, it's just crazy, you know, keep it a bit more sensible. And, you know, we're going to have a bartender from hell, I mean, why not? Um, yeah, and, uh, and I do think the comic would have been half as good without Section 8, for instance. If anybody remembers them, the madcap misfit band of crazy superheroes uh, straight out of Gotham, who, uh, who uh, my favourite character, I'm, just, I'm going to reminisce a bit now. Is that useful? No, it's okay. <laughs> Your ringtone is exactly the same as mine. So. Oh, you switched off. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, yeah. Fair enough. I to hear what that was. Um, yes, yes, it was uh, Bueno Excellente. He fought crime with the power of perversion. Basically, he, uh, he buggered his foes to death, which, uh, and this is in a regular DC comic that crosses over into Batman and such like. And we've got a character who has sex with people until they die, which is uh, quite, a, quite a thing, I suppose. Um, but he was created. Garth and I were trying to come up with characters for it, and I told Garth about my, uh, my brother who had gone on a business trip to Holland, and he'd been in his hotel room watching some pornography, and uh, he was watching uh, this fellow having sex with two young ladies, and uh, every time he uh, had another, another joyful moment, <laughs> when, when, when. <laughs> And then when he climaxed, he went, Bueno, excellente. <laughs> and that's what the bar story got him. Bueno, excellente, a new superhero for a crazy new generation of kids. <laughs> and that's how Bueno was born. Too much born is a jacket.